Hi, I'm Claudio Marcantonini from Flores School of Regulation. We are at the 2015 European Environmental Evaluator Networks. And here with us, we have Hans Brunix, who is the Executive Director of the European Environmental Agency. Hans, first of all, what is the importance of evaluating environmental policy, in particular climate policy? Well, I think it's clear that climate uh, change and dealing with it is one of the big challenges of our time and for the next decades to come. We have put already in place a very elaborate set of policies that have an impact on nearly everything we do, our energy system, how we build houses, how we uh, think about mobility. Um, and so I think it's absolutely important that we know what works. Yeah, that's the, the policy evaluation per se. But also we need to know whether what we intended with those policies, namely on the one hand policy mitigation, limiting the greenhouse gas emissions, and on the other hand dealing with the changes in climate that we already observe, that's the adaptation side, whether those policies actually work and have the impact that we desired. Why? Because we know that we will have to step it up in order to further deal with this. We are not where we have to be in mitigation. The goal is to reduce in Europe by 2050 by at least 80%. So we need to know in what direction we need to move, what the most effective policies are, what the most efficient policies are in terms of economy and investing in new technology. And that's why I think this field is uh, absolutely crucial when we want to improve our performance in climate policies, which are by now a very broad scala of policy interventions. So it's a learning by doing a, a methodology, learn from the past in order to improve our future Yes, well, policies. on the one hand, there is a big ex ante uh, exposed part of it where we look uh, to the past. But I think we also understand that we will need to use ex ante methodologies mm -hmm. where we try to predict in a more structured mm -hmm. way what our policies might bring. And I think we need to embed much better over these long time trajectories during the policy interventions, how we can in a more continuous way evaluate what is going on to have faster mechanisms to intervene and steer in the direction that we think we ought to be going. And what is the role of the European Environment Agency in evaluating uh, environment and climate policy? Well, our key role is for European countries to uh, provide the, the data and the information and the knowledge on climate and environment policies. And one of the pieces of information that we are emphasizing currently is that policy evaluation, which is a specific methodology or set of methodologies. And so we, in, in uh, we make sure that the European policy makers at the level of the Commission, the Parliament, but also the countries, the member countries, are informed in the best possible way. And I think what makes us unique is that we do this with a very strong network of the member countries, which means that there is a high legitimacy of it. We, we do this in a very transparent and structured way, and also based on solid flows of data and information that are monitored okay. in a European setting. Okay, so information based on empirical data. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and the last question. Can you tell us what are your expectations for the Paris conference of next December? Well, I think that the challenge is quite clear. On the one hand, we need to make sure that Paris is a breakthrough when it comes to having everybody in the same boat and not just the industrialized countries that need to reduce and then the rest can, can sort of do what, what they want. I think everybody needs to understand that climate mitigation and adaptation are responsibilities for everybody, so a global agreement. Secondly, I think it's clear that the goal of two degrees, uh, we will not get there with the pledges that are made today and probably also not in Paris. So we will need a very strong and credible follow-up mechanism that can keep increasing that ambition with credible policies. And thirdly, I think uh, one doesn't have to be naive. There is a high economic dimension to all of this. So we need credible financing mechanisms to make this really uh, an engaging global agreement. Okay, thanks, Hans. Absolutely.